I titled today's mind map, Acres of Diamonds Now. Today, I had the opportunity to revisit three books. Number one, The Power of Now. Number two, The One Thing by Gary Keller. And number three, Acres of Diamonds by Russell Conwell. Russell Conwell was a lawyer and writer. He was also the founder of Temple University in Philadelphia, which was funded by many millions of dollars which he had earned by traveling and giving his famous Acres of Diamonds speech. Now, I want to relate these all together because I believe that where we are right now is our Acres of Diamonds. And what I believe is the world of imagination is rich with opportunity, visions, ideas, and we enable it by valuing the present moment, where we are right now. And so the story goes that there was once a farmer who heard tales about other farmers earning millions of dollars by discovering diamond mines. These tales excited the farmer to the point where he sold his own farm and spent the rest of his life wandering Africa, searching unsuccessfully for diamonds, which he never found. Meanwhile, the man who had bought his farm happened to be crossing a small stream on the property one day when he noticed a flash of light in it. He bent down and picked up a stone. It was a good-sized stone, and admiring it, he brought it home and put it on his fireplace mantel, just as an interesting curiosity. Now, several weeks later, a visitor to his home picked up the stone and looked at it carefully. And he asked the farmer if he knew what he had found. When the farmer said no, that he thought it was a piece of crystal, the visitor told him that he had found one of the largest diamonds ever discovered. The farmer, having trouble believing this, told the man that his creek was full of such stones, not as large as the one on the mantle, but sprinkled generously throughout the creek bottom. So apparently the farm that the first farmer had sold so that he could go out and look for diamonds, turned out to be one of the most productive diamond mines on the entire African continent. The first farmer had owned free and clear acres of diamonds, but had sold them for practically nothing in order to go looking elsewhere for diamonds. Now, the central lesson of the story is that the resources the relationships, the scope of opportunities, everything that they need to achieve all that they desire is present right now within the individual's awareness. Now, we've been discussing that past, present, and future are actually now. Mind weaves a journey to the destination. And on this journey to the destination are infinite resources. Now, this is true for the entrepreneur, those that are interested in creating the ideal lifestyle in whatever shape or form. Everything that we need is right here, right now. Now, I've discovered this on the journey as well. There's a few books that I like to revisit, these books right here being a few of them, every now and then to remind myself so I can recognize, or I could say recognize that actually everything that I need is right here. And for whatever the reason may be, I can identify with certain thinking patterns that seems to create this illusion that what I'm looking for is elsewhere. When I look back at the results that I've had in my life, and upon having conversations with thousands of individuals who have produced success, one of the commonalities that I find is their ability to stay committed to the opportunities that they have and see the opportunities that they have 
all the way till success. In the entrepreneurial journey, this could be that a person starts with one product or service, and the product or the service or the opportunity grows into a very successful business. Or through the journey of committing with that product or service, more innovation is brought forth. For example, a person might be selling a product or service to their client base. All of a sudden, they discover an opportunity within their scope of clients for a particular software or technology or process. And they look around and they see that nobody is serving that need. It's a very distinct, or we could say a niche need in the marketplace. So they, as a result of valuing where they are, the opportunities, the relationships that they have, they not only are able to identify this need, but because they have the relationships with their clients, they find it easier to make the offer for that distinct product or service. Now, after making that offer and having a number of their clients take them up on that offer, they now have case studies, testimonials, reference experience, and they're able to take that now, which has presented itself as a result of valuing the opportunities, and go out there into the marketplace to spread the product or service at a broader scale. And when we look back at this, we see the relatability to the story of Acres of Diamonds. A person can spend so much time and even their whole life looking for the value that is already there right in front of them right now in the relationships, in the resources, in the opportunities. All they need to do is practice a higher degree of presence or we could say being in the now with what they have and they'll actually be able to see it. And so in the book, Power of Now, as I was going through it today, this quote stood out. He says, you are aware of where you want to go, but you honor and give your fullest attention to the step that you are taking at this moment. So we all have goals. We all have visions. We all have definite chief aims. And what we want to do is give our fullest attention to the step that we are taking right now, whatever it is, the task, the project, the opportunity. Because this is how we reveal the power of our imagination. As we discussed in Sunday's video, the nuances. Nuances could be looked at as the different ways that we can connect the relationships, the resources to create new products or services or solve operational inefficiencies in our own business, which could then turn into opportunities to help others in their businesses. See, one of the things that I realized while I was building my IT business from 2009 to 2013 is that although I was building a service business, providing IT services, I was also going through the opportunities of growing a business. As in, I was involved with sales, marketing, innovation, operations, many different things, team building. And as I was going through these experiences, I was building reference experience. I was building experience that I found was actually translating over to more sales in the business even though I was selling IT services. Because I noticed that when I was having conversations with prospects or clients, they would bring up stories or challenges that they were experiencing outside of the IT challenges. Challenges with their businesses. I was dealing with business owners, those in upper management and so forth. And the challenges that they were experiencing were the same challenges that I had once experienced that I overcame. And I noticed that as I would have those conversations with them about their challenges, the relationships would build. And as those relationships would build, they would be more open to listen to the various services and products that I was offering, not just 
my own products or services, but I had partnerships, joint venture relationships with other businesses in which if for whatever the reason, the product or service that I was offering was not a match for them, I would see an opportunity to connect them with one of my joint venture partners and I would make a percentage on that deal or get a referral fee. What they were seeing me as was somebody that would overall help them grow their business overall. Although they looked at me from one angle as a IT service provider, they saw that I was a lot more than an IT service provider. Now I believe that this is not just the case with me. I believe it's the case with you as well. I believe it's the case with all of us. We oftentimes do not see the value in ourselves to the degree that we actually possess. And one of my aims with these conversations is to actually reveal the acres of diamonds of value that we have within ourselves, as well as the relationships, the resources, and the opportunities that we have right now. And so that is why I like to revisit the same books again and again and again, because I find that by taking the information and going and applying the information and producing success with the information, when I go back to the books, the information is seen from a different perspective as a result of the inward changes that occur from applying the information and producing reference experience, the information is understood to a higher degree. So he says, if you then become excessively focused on the goal, perhaps because you are seeking happiness, fulfillment, or a more complete sense of self in it, the now is no longer honored. Now this makes even more sense to me because when we're relating it over to the acres of diamonds, the happiness, the fulfillment, the complete sense of self is found now and only now. This is done by really recognizing that we are complete, happy, and fulfilled right now doing what we really love to do, which is working on our goals, our visions, but more so from the deep value and presence in this now, in this moment, on this task, on the initiative, whatever it is that you have committed to doing. He says it becomes reduced to mere stepping stones to the future with no intrinsic value. In other words, we're not valuing the acres of diamonds, both inner and outer. He says your life's journey is no longer an adventure, just an obsessive need to arrive, to attain, to make it. Now, I mentioned this many times. I value the journey and the destination. I see them all as one. And most of, we could say, time is on the journey to the destination, depending on what our goals are. For example, this is the case in the entrepreneurial journey, those that are athletes, those that are looking to cultivate a skill. Much of the time is invested in learning the skill, practicing the skill, mastering the skill, executing on the task, the projects, etc. If you see those as just some step that we got to go through and we don't really want to be there, then I believe, and I've seen this in myself, I'm not seeing the value, the opportunities as to what is being presented in front of me right now in the five sensory experience. So I could reflect upon that because we are reflecting that information and see it for how it truly is which is in harmony and in contribution to our goals and visions to higher degrees than maybe we have given it credit for. However, we have the opportunity to practice this more so, and we'll go through weaving this into the one thing by Gary Keller to help us apply this. And we'll see the power behind the simplicity of how this all works. He says, your life's journey is no longer an adventure just an obsessive need to arrive when the adventure happens on the journey. You get to the destination, you feel fulfillment. There's a journey to the destination, one of adventure, one of happiness, one of fulfillment, one of experiencing the complete sense of self, which we can value 
by actually valuing what we're doing to a higher degree, saying this, what I'm working on, this, what I'm doing right now is exactly what I want to do. This is exactly where I want to be. And if not, then why are we there? That's a question that I always ask myself because for me, I really want to do what I love to do. And if I'm doing something that I don't really love to do, I want to ask myself the question, why do I not feel this completion within myself? That I would have this experience externalized as not loving the experiences that I do each day. We can relate this to what we talk about in the Dr. Joe Dispenza video, where we found the relatability, surrendering to the vision realize as the key. But we surrender to the vision realize experientially by valuing where we are right now in the tasks, the initiative, and so forth. Now, here's a practical way of applying this. In the book, The One Thing, it states, right now is all we have to work with. Our past is but a former now. Our future is a potential one. To drive this point home, I started referring to the way to create a powerful priority as goal setting to the now. When I teach goal setting, I make it my top priority to show how a goal and a priority work together. I do this by asking, why do we set goals and create plans? In spite of all the good answers I get, the truth is we have goals and plans for only one reason, to be appropriate in the moments of our lives that matter. While we may pull from the past and forecast the future, reality is the present moment. Our past is but a former now, our future a potential one. To delve this point home, I started referring to the way to create a powerful priority as goal setting to the now, to emphasize why we are creating a priority in the first place. The truth about success is that our ability to achieve extraordinary results in the future lies in stringing together powerful moments one after another. What you do in any given moment, or we could say how we value our time, our energy, our resources, our relationships, the opportunities that we have, determines what you experience in the next. Your present now and all future nows are undeniably determined by the priority you live in the moment. And so he outlines a very nice process that we can work with here to bring us back into valuing what we're doing right now and to value it to a deeper degree. Because I believe, and I've been working with this information for many years, that no matter where I am, I could always value what I'm doing, be it a conversation, be it a project, be it working out at the gym, whatever it is, I could value it to a higher degree. And I noticed, as I had mentioned in Sunday's video, when we discussed some of those exercises that were provided by Rudolf Steiner, one of them particularly, of contemplating, I noticed that I see more opportunities by really valuing what I'm doing. I also maintain the flow. As mentioned, I encourage making flow a priority because when we make flow a priority, we feel one with the task, the project, our goal, our vision, all in the eternal now. And we actually see and experience the acres of diamonds. We see more opportunities. And the beauty is that we find that we might not even need to move forward with those opportunities, but we do see them. And that brings us an enormous amount of peace because we know that there's opportunities everywhere. And we know then the real opportunity in the moment is to value the opportunity of the task or project of the moment and see it all the way till completion. So he says, to understand how goal setting to the now will guide your thinking and determine your most important priority, read this out loud to yourself. Number one, based 
on my someday goal. What's the one thing I can do in the next five years to be on track to achieve it? So whatever it is, whatever definite chief aim or grand destination, you can ask yourself the question. And I found by asking myself this question, it starts to bring me into clarity. Now, one doesn't have to go through this entire process, but certainly as we go through it, depending on the level of abstraction, we'll start to get a certain level of clarity. For example, if a person thinks about what's the number one thing they could do in the next five years that will help them achieve the goal, it narrows the what would appear as a lot of different things a person can do and brings it down into the most relevant. Now, here's the interesting thing about the thing that we know we got to do. It really is about getting into the flow. Is the thing that we're doing going to contribute drastically to the success? You know, when I look back at my experience, I realize that sometimes just the simplest task that was identified by using a process like this was something like just cleaning up my desk actually stimulated an idea. Just by bringing myself into the now, I got an idea to do something that would be considered a bigger project. So just doing something like cleaning my desk actually stimulated that idea. So we can see that what this also helps us tap into is a higher degree of lateral thinking, or we can refer to this as outside of the box thinking, which by the way, is stimulated also by the anandamide release. As we talked about this in last Thursday's video, I'll put a link in the description to this. Anandamide, neurotransmitter, has been known to increase or stimulate lateral thinking, outside of the box thinking. So number two, he says, based on the five-year goal, what's the one thing that I could do this year to be on track to achieve my five-year goal so that I'm on track to achieve my goal someday. For example, someday goal, we can call it definite chief aim, which is to have a net worth of X amount of dollars, let's say. What's the one thing I can do in the next five years to be on track to achieve it? It could be something like increase sales to X amount of dollars per year. That's the one thing that if developed in the business, will result in achieving that level of net worth or that level of business success. Number two, based on my five-year goal, what's the one thing I could do this year to be on track to achieving my five-year goal so that I'm on track to achieving my someday goal? So it could be something like to do five prospecting calls each day, Monday to Friday, this entire year, I commit to it. Number three, based on my goal this year, what's the one thing I can do this month? So I'm on track to achieve my goal this year. So I'm on track to achieve my five-year goal. So I'm on track to achieve my someday goal. So what he's doing with this process is he's taking what would, for some, be an overwhelming amount of things a person can do or seemingly overwhelming amount of things a person can do to achieve success and breaking it down so they can find the acres of diamond opportunity and from there break it down even further so five-year goal one-year goal and one month so in one month it could be i just commit to doing five prospecting calls a day monday to friday for 30 days this is very similar to what i have done actually in my entrepreneurial journey which was inspired by The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. And actually, The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale also introduced me to the Acres of Diamonds. For some reason, at that stage of my journey, it felt a lot more doable. I could really do this. I could commit for 30 days to do this one thing. What is it? And we know the answer. When we break it down into a process like this, we actually discover the answer. And then we commit to it. Number four, now based on my goal this month, 
What's the one thing I can do this week so I'm on track to achieve my goal this month? So I'm on track to achieve my goal this year. So I'm on track to achieve my five-year goal. So I'm on track to achieve my someday goal. So what we'll notice is that it'll start to get easier now and we'll start to feel even more relaxed because we'll see that by breaking it down, this is far easier than we think it is. So a person might say, well, then I just commit this week to do five prospecting calls a day. And here's the beautiful thing. What we're doing here is we're building habits of doing the things that we really want to do. Now, it may be the prospecting calls. It could be something else. It could be dedicating. For example, a person can say, I'm going to dedicate for this whole year four hours at the end of the day. Maybe a person has a full-time job. Four hours at the end of the day to work on my business. And you break it down by month. For this entire month, I'm going to dedicate four hours a day for this entire month. That's the goal. What we'll find is that when we commit to, let's say a person says, I'm going to dedicate four hours a day at the end of the day to work on my business, and they carve out that time. The next week, it gets easier. Then it gets easier the following week. And now they're valuing their time. And a person can then start to work with the power of now and acres of diamonds to a higher degree because they can actually question what they're doing in that four hours. They can say, look, I've got my time, I've got my energy, I've got my resources, and I got the various opportunities that I could do in this time. I pick this opportunity or that opportunity. They're developing the habit of narrowing it down over to the one thing because Here's what I found about achieving goals and visions. Wherever we are is a step to achieving the goal or destination. And if we value where we are right now, then we will actually be able to get to the destination in a lot more of a flow-based, fun, joyous way, and we'll find some of the opportunities, such as what I shared earlier, and I've had many of these experiences as a result of working with a process like this because what we're really doing is we're taking the acres of diamonds, the power of now, the book, the one thing, and we're combining it together in a way where we actually have the opportunity to discover what that one thing is and commit to it and actually experience. You'll notice this. When you commit to this, you'll actually experience and understand to a deeper degree, experientially, the power of now and acres of diamonds, because you will see the value and opportunities that seem to reveal themselves. Because remember, if we go back to the acres of diamonds story, the individual that owned the farm didn't dedicate the time and the energy to inspect what they had, to look and see if there was value in the farm because most likely, if they did that, they would have noticed that they had their own acres of diamonds before they sold it. And so now we break it down even further. He says, now, based on my goal this week, what's the one thing that I can do today? So it could be for the individual, today's the day I carve out four hours to work on my business. Or today's the day where I commit to five prospecting calls and see it all the way to completion. And this could be the first time that an individual, I've noticed this, I've had this conversation with many and brought it down to this simplicity and it was actually the first time where they narrowed it down themselves to the one day and they completed that day and they felt this enormous level of self-esteem and self-confidence at the end of the day because they know that they could do this again and again and again. And they did. They ended up making it a habit. And they find that they're able to do this easier. You know, many ask me, how do you stay committed to releasing these videos? Because I know how to work with the acres of diamonds, the power of now, and the one thing by narrowing it down and simply asking myself, what are the most important things that I can do each day? 
that will help me achieve my definite chief aim, or we could say one day goal. I can break it down if I needed that clarity to the five year goal, then one year, then one month, then one week, down to this day. And then I could sequence my day accordingly. And after doing this for years, it becomes a habit. You achieve your goals, you achieve your visions, you achieve your definite chief aims, and you notice how the acres of diamonds works to a higher degree because you see relationships, resources, value, and opportunities everywhere. And because you know then you could either do this or you could do that, you can choose exactly what you want to do, the one thing from the huge array of opportunities that you see. And you'll recognize one of the important lessons of working with this information that the opportunities were always there, are always there, and will always be there. And this will bring forth a heightened degree of inner peace and calm, knowing that exactly where you are is exactly where you want to be. And you'll experience, let's go back here, you'll experience the happiness, fulfillment, and complete sense of self by recognizing the complete sense of self in the now. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You can say everywhere I go, everywhere I am, I find my acres of diamonds. By recognizing and valuing the opportunity that I have right now, the resources that I have right now, the relationships that I have right now, I'm able to further reveal additional opportunities, resources, relationships that are in harmony and in contribution to my definite chief aim, to my goals, my vision. This brings me an enormous peace as I live this way, committing to what I know I want to commit to right now, knowing that some way, somehow, that which I commit to, which I know within myself is the thing to commit to, the activity to commit to, the project to commit to, the task to commit to, will some way, somehow, upon connecting the dots looking backwards, bring me to the realization that it brought me to the destination. As I recognize this, I realize wherever I am and whatever I do brings me to the destination. And the journey is really about valuing that everywhere I go, everything I touch reveals my acres of diamonds. And that I know exactly what I want to do, and I find myself automatically committing to and staying committed to what I truly love and what I truly want to do. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.